In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. Dear friends, how vast is God's grace. God guides us in God's own way. God relieves the burdens of our sins and breaks the systems of evil. God turns us outward into God's life of love for all. God's amazing grace shows us how to repair trust and to celebrate difference. God's abundant mercy shows us a vision of a world where all are fed by God's own hand, where today's bread is enough for today. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, our God never tires of forgiving sin. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out the just mercy of Jesus Christ through the reconciling peace of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to join with me as you are able, singing at home and praying here in the sanctuary as we sing, Arise, Your Light Has Come. Ta 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 da ta 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 Arise, your light has come, the Spirit's call obey. Show forth the glory of your God which shines on you today. Arise, your light has come, bring wide the prison door. Proclaim the captive's liberty, good tidings to the poor. Arise, your light has come, all you who in sorrow born. Bind up the broken-hearted ones and comfort those who mourn. Arise, your light has come, the mountains burst in song. Rise up like eagles on the wing, God's power will make us strong. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us hear now the readings of the day. A reading from Deuteronomy. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. <clears throat> You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb at the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. 
anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to sing, say, or pray with me as you are able. Psalm 111. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Alleluia. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright, in the congregation. Great are your works, O Lord, pondered by all who delight in them. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. You cause your wonders to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give good to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. You have shown your people the power of your works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All of your precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice this have a good understanding. God's praise endures forever. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols... We know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge pops up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us closer to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your own family, and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a call, is a cause of their failing, I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 
We welcome the gospel as you are able. I invite you to sing, pray, or say, hymn 611, I heard the voice of Jesus say. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down, O oh weary one, lay down your head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was so weary, worn, and sad. I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Behold, I freely give. The living water, thirsty ones, to hope down and drink and live. I came to Jesus, and I drank of that life-giving stream. My thirst was quenched, my soul revived, and now I live in him. I heard the voice of Jesus say, I am this dark world's light. Look unto me, your morn shall rise, and all your day be bright. I looked to Jesus, and I found in him my star, my sun. And in that light of life I'll walk till traveling days are done. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed. And they kept on asking one another, what is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of Jesus, amen. When I was young, er, I used to describe myself as having a problem with authority. So I can understand resistance to someone who walks into a room and simply claims that what they say goes. It seems to me that skepticism like that is understandable in light of all of the false prophets and predatory leaders and simple liars that occupy positions of high authority in our world. But today, in this Gospel's reading, we have the opposite problem. We have a rejection of authority, and not because of its abuse, but because of fear and disassociation from ourselves and our community and our God. And I wonder, I wonder in this time of turmoil, how many times Jesus has heard this unclean spirit shout from the pews of congregations in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, what have you to do with us? I don't know, maybe it's a good question. What does Jesus have to do with us? 
Jesus enters the place of community worship and teaches as though he has authority, not like the scribes. And then there is someone among them who has an unclean spirit. Now, in the ancient Near East, synagogues did not often get visitors from out of town, especially in minor locations. Now, Capernaum was certainly larger and more populous than Nazareth, but the fact remains that in the narrative, this is almost certainly a local person, a local member of the Jewish community, someone who is known to those who hear him. I wonder, how long had the community said, oh, that's just Bob. Nothing's going to change him. It's not worth getting riled up over. He's just going to say what he says. I wonder how many gatherings had this unclean spirit had this unclean spirit ruined. How many gatherings ruined because this community feared confrontation? I wonder how many times had a necessary decision been delayed or a compromise been undermined by this unclean spirit who now asks what on earth Jesus has to do with us. Note, by the way, the unclean spirit doesn't even lie. Nothing the spirit says is wrong, technically. The spirit asks two questions and makes a declaration of Jesus' identity, a declaration which is accurate. The unclean spirit knows who Jesus is, but wonders, or pretends to wonder, why Jesus is there, teaching with authority. The lie, you see, isn't a statement, but as is so often true with the unclean spirits, the lie is accomplished through an innuendo. Have you come to destroy us? The unclean spirit is attempting to move the community from astonishment of Jesus' authority to fear of Jesus' authority. After all, if this Jesus has this authority and has come to make us do things, won't that be dangerous? What if he teaches us something hard? What if he teaches us to reject false allegiances or to sell our possessions or to reject the power structures of society or to rearrange the way we live our lives? Listen to the way he is talking. Has he come here to destroy us? What does Jesus of Nazareth have to do with us? The answer, of course, is that Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy One of God, has come down from heaven to set us free so that we can live as God calls us to, rather than the way we have been taught and trained and are used to. Jesus, however, does not respond to these questions asked by the unclean spirit. He doesn't answer the questions because the questions are traps. After all, has Jesus come to destroy us? Well, kind of. If we consider only the destructive element of change, only the element of loss that is always a part of repentance and renewal, then yes, there is a kind of destruction and a kind of loss involved. But that's the conversation the unclean spirit wants to have. So Jesus doesn't go into debates or explanations because the unclean spirit doesn't really mean these questions. They're tricks, they're lies, they're manipulations meant for the community, for the hearer of the question, not for Jesus to answer. So Jesus does not give an answer. Instead, he says, be silent and come out of him. Dear friends, every once in a great while, an unclean spirit speaks in a community of faith. The aim is not to challenge the authority of the Lord directly. In fact, the speech often seems rational, reasonable, measured, moderate. But Christians do not judge such things by intentions or by reason, but by the fruit of such speech. 
So when we hear a voice in the mouth of a loved one, in the mouth of a stranger, or in our own heart, a voice that asks, what's going to happen if we really do this? A voice that remarks, it sounds as though this Jesus figure might not have our best interests at heart, might not have the same priorities that we do. When we hear a voice that wonders what Jesus really has to do with us after all. That is an unclean spirit attempting to take our astonishment and change it into fear. To take our surprise at who Jesus is and turn it into rejection of God's mercy. There is no arguing with such voices because they are dishonest. Oh, I'm just asking, what about the Jewish question? What's your position? The voice might say. Or perhaps, look, I just don't want my church involved in politics. Or maybe you can't do that. You can't say that. People will leave and the church will close. These are the words of unclean spirits working fear and division and prejudice, closing us off from each other, leading us to turn away from Jesus Christ. And the only possible response is, be silent. Come out of him. Come out of her. Come out of them. Don't misunderstand. Jesus wants us to ask questions and seek understanding. Paul, in our first Corinthians reading, is wrestling with questions about ritual observance. And Moses and God, also in Deuteronomy, are trying to figure out how God's word is going to get to this people who seem completely overwhelmed every time God tries to communicate with them. And God in Deuteronomy does not what is pure, not what is clear, not what is obvious, but what helps. And Paul says, ultimately, that the measure of what we do is what aids the proclamation of the gospel and the faith of our neighbor, not our advanced theology. Not our ideological purity, not our clinging to traditions, not our protections of our space and our heritage. We can have a problem with authority. So long as that problem is tied to wanting this authority, whatever it is, to be for us, for the human beings who are in need, not against us. And that is what Jesus of Nazareth has to do with us. Here is God. The God who is for us, not against us. And we know this, not because some pastor told you so, but because of what Jesus does. Healing the sick, raising the dead, creating community, opposing evil, freeing hearts and minds, pointing to what gives life and rejecting what hurts and kills us. We know this Jesus has authority because he casts out the unclean spirits that so fear. We know this Jesus can be trusted with that authority because the forces he silences and casts out are those that have been hurting us. Racism, sexism, economic injustice and greed, fear and hatred, insecurity and anger. Jesus claims authority, but not by telling us how great he is, but by doing signs and wonders freeing us from bondage, forgiving sins, and giving his life to us so that we might live together at last. And that kind of authority we can trust. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you, as you're able, to join with us in hymn 720. For those present, uh, I invite you to devote yourselves to this hymn as possible. And if you're at home, please sing along. 
da 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 Shine with the joy and the love of the Lord we are called to be light for the kingdom, to live in the freedom of the city of God. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another to walk humbly with God. Come, open your heart. Show your mercy to all those in fear. We are called to be hope for the hopeless, so hatred and blindness will be no more. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another, to walk humbly with God. Sing, sing a new song. Sing of the great day when all will be one, God will reign. And we'll walk with each other as sisters and brothers united in love. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another, to walk humbly with God. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, for the world, and for all people in need. For all who share the gospel and proclaim freedom in Christ throughout the world, prophets, teachers, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders, for the church and its ministries, let us pray. Have mercy, mercy God. God. For all God's works in creation, plants and animals, water and soil, forests and farms, and for those tasked with protecting our natural resources and all that exists, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy God. God. For government and leaders, cities and nations, rescue professionals and legal aid attorneys, elected officials and grassroots organizers, for all responsible for the well-being of civil society, let us pray. Have mercy, mercy, mercy God. God. For those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, those who are sick and hospitalized, those living with HIV AIDS, those struggling with mental illness, those who are hungry or homeless, and all in any need, especially Warren, Roy, Patty, Joe, and George. For caregivers, hospice workers, and home health aides, let us pray. Mercy. Have mercy, O oh God. For the concerns of this congregation, those who travel, those absent from worship, those celebrating birthdays or anniversaries, for the people of God in this place and for other needs in our community, especially those who care for the young and the old, those trying to help distribute the coronavirus vaccine, those who suffer poverty of all kinds, and those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Shannon Gilvery. Let us pray. Have mercy, Have mercy, God. 
For obedience to the covenant, God made us in the waters of baptism and in thanksgiving for the baptized who have died in the Lord. Let us pray. Have mercy, mercy, mercy O God. God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. 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 And the peace of Christ be with you always. Dear friends, the time has come again for me to remind you that this ministry cannot continue without your generous support, for which we are deeply thankful. Just last Sunday, we had an annual meeting of finances and budget where our wonderful volunteers, treasurers, assistant treasurer, financial secretary, council members, all presented to us a financial, part, financial plan, which we have passed for the coming year. Please help us in this ministry as you are able. There are many ways to do so. If you'd like to contribute, there is an offering plate in the rear of the nave. There, you can mail us a check. You can use the Give Plus app found in your app store. You can set up direct deposit through Vanco. That's what I use. I highly recommend it. It takes a lot of the paperwork out of the problem, and you know always what you're giving based on your projected income. Let us also remember in this time of cold that those who are unhoused or hungry have great need of our assistance. Please, if you are able or know of a ministry or person who is in need, take some time this week to aid them in whatever way you are called to do so, in whatever way you have the equipment to do so. Please also keep in mind our synod, which is also having a uh, synod assembly this coming, I believe it's in May, uh, which will be the first time we've met since the pandemic hit. Uh, and that will be a discussion of budgets and budgetary matters as well. And keep in mind also the church-wide organization of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, which does so much to organize mission and ministry throughout the world. I invite you now to join with me in our canticle of thanksgiving, songs of thankfulness and praise as you are able. Da, 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 da. Songs of thankfulness and praise, Jesus, Lord, to thee we raise, manifested by the star to the sages from afar. Branch of royal David, stand in thy birth at Bethlehem. Anthems be to thee addressed, God in flesh made manifest. Manifest at Jordan stream, prophet, priest, and king supreme, and at king a wedding guest, in thy Godhead manifest. Manifest in power divine, changing water into wine, anthems be to thee addressed, God in flesh made manifest. Manifest in making whole, weakened body, fainting soul. Manifest in valiant fight, quelling all the devil's might. Manifest in gracious will, ever bringing good from ill. Anthems be to thee addressed, God in flesh made manifest. Grant us grace to see thee, Lord, present in thy holy word. Grace to imitate thee now, and be pure as pure art thou, that we might become like thee at thy great epiphany, and may praise thee ever blessed. God in flesh made manifest. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Most merciful Lord, we grieve that we cannot assemble to hear your word and receive your supper. We experience the weight of separation and we long for conversation and consolation gathered as one body in you. 
Yet, O Lord Jesus, remind us of the bold and beautifully audacious woman who also could not touch your body, but dared in faith to grab hold of the hem of your garment, that she would be healed. Remind us also of Mary, your mother, who treasured the words of the angels and pondered them in her heart. Grant to us such treasuring of your word, such pondering in our hearts, and such boldness of faith, when we too may not take hold of your body and blood, that we might, like Mary, bear your word into the world, and like the woman who believed, cling to the hem of your garment and receive the grace of your healing. Deliver us from pestilence, sorrow, and hardship. Protect those who must put themselves at risk during this time. In this wilderness, teach us to be your people and bring us again to your table so that we may not only touch your hem, but commune with you. Shape us through this experience to better embody being your people for the sake of the world. Renew and restore us, O Christ, for you live and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Dear friends, I invite you to sing with me our sending hymn, and if you're present here, I think that you'll find a rhythm you can snap, clap, stomp to, or if you like, hum along with your mouth closed. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. And I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. A reminder, dear friends, I'll be on vacation, and so we will not be able to host in-person worship or have Zoom worship next weekend. On Sunday, January 7th, the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany, there will be an email that goes out, as well as one tomorrow, which has links for a variety of local congregations, uh, all Lutheran, where you can join them online. Please consider doing that. Uh, I know that's what I will be doing. I will be returned for the 14th of February, which is the Transfiguration of Our Lord. I will be back at work on February 8th. So if you'd like to contact me, you can do that by then. If you need an emergency contact before then, Jim Bast, our council president, will have a number for a local pastor who will be able to help you should an emergency arise. Now go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Dun -dun -dun, dun -dun -dun, dun -dun -dun.